Well, good morning and uh, welcome to Sunday morning worship here in High Street, whether you are here in person or watching later at home. The reason why we're a lot smaller in the church sanctuary this morning is that whilst we are meeting here, uh, some of our families are beginning a uh, messy church in the hall below under Mark's leadership. And the plan is that we, uh, certainly during this, uh, this COVID period and beyond, hold messy church once a month because it's aimed uh, towards families with, uh, with kids. And it helps in some way to, to compensate uh, for the loss of kids' church in these continuing days of uh, restrictions. Just one or two announcements. Uh, can I just say a big thank you on behalf of Craig Avenue Youth for Christ uh, to all our folk who brought second-hand uh, toys uh, or new toys for the Toy Swap Appeal uh, last Sunday. I, I don't know how the actual Toy Swap went uh, on, the, on Friday and Saturday of this week. What I do know is when I called over at the, uh, at the office across the way, it was literally piled from the, the floor to the ceiling with, uh, you know, with, with toys that they uh, then had to transport from there down to uh, the Baptist Church for uh, the Toy Swap. I got a text through the week uh, thanking the folk at High Street here for all uh, the, you contributed. They said they were blown away by our response as well as the response of many other churches as well. Praise and prayer meeting will be on Tuesday night at 7.30 on Zoom and the usual links will be sent out uh, by email and all is welcome. The middle uh, Sunday in, in, in in November is Home Mission Sunday. It's the time of the year when we particularly focus on the mission of the church here in Ireland. And the theme of the uh, of Home Mission Sunday uh, this year is the theme Unforced, Living on Mission with Jesus in the Reality of Our Everyday. I want you to watch this, uh, this short video that introduces this theme. Are you tired, worn out, burned out in religion? Come to me, get away with me and you'll recover your life. In the midst of the turbulence of this world at the minute, um, Jesus has given me a steadiness, a hope and a vision for our community. I can say because of this, my faith is going on a mission because this is a mission that I never thought I would do. Jesus has been inviting me to listen better to what people are saying to understand their fears and to be more forgiving. Take a rest, get away from it all, recover your life. These words may be exactly what you want to hear right now. The months that have passed have been tough, the weeks ahead seem long, we're tired and uncertain, we're tempted to batten down the matches and take a break. That's what Jesus is saying, right? Jesus suggests that we spend time walking with him and working with him that we watch how he does life in order to find real rest. My last year of school was cut short. Lockdown started and life became a bit tough. I wasn't sure where God was in all of this. And then I began to realise in my lockdown world, I was surrounded by so many gifts. Covid forced me to really start to pray about how I can serve my neighbours well. You know, to pray for for for, for patients, it's work or residents, it's work. It's usually the chaplain will have to do that. I'll show you how to take a real rest. Walk with me and work with me. Watch how I do it. What if we started each day asking Jesus, what do you want me to do today? How can I work with you today? What if mission is light? What if it fits? What if it's unforced, flowing out of a deeper connection with Jesus and out of who we are as we recover the life that comes from walking step by step with him? Learn the unforced rhythms of grace. I won't lay anything heavy or ill-fitting on you. These are days for unforced mission. Living on mission with Jesus freely and lightly bringing hope to those we encounter in the reality of our everyday. I like to think that the way I do stuff, the way I talk with people, the way I interact with other people, um, becomes natural. 
because my heart is in the right place. So I just long for the day that somebody might come up to me and say, I want to know why you do what you do and what you do in the manner that you do. I felt God is in some way uh, teaching me or pointing me to do that and to point people to, to Jesus Christ. Life here is natural and unforced. During the sunnier days, we sat out on our front doorstep watching our children play out in the grass as others sat out on their own front doorsteps with cups of tea and we chatted neighbour to neighbour. Jesus got alongside people, he, he got to know them, he, he asked them questions, he ate with them, he showed them love. And surely, if I'm trying to live for him on campus, I, I should try to do the same. Now, is this theme that will be unpacked uh, through the, uh, the service today? But we begin with a call to worship from Psalm 107, beginning at verse 1. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord tell their story. Let them give thanks to the Lord for his unfailing love and his wonderful deeds for mankind. For he satisfies the thirsty and fills the hungry with good things. Our opening song this morning is a familiar uh, hymn based uh, on the, with the words, Come, let us sing of a wonderful love. We stand, if you're able, and sing quietly.
this morning is based on some of the words of the song that we've just sung. So let us pray. Come, let us sing of a wonderful love, tender and true. Heavenly Father, we praise you and thank you for your incredible love this morning. Your love is displayed in the wonder of your creation. Your love is shown to us in your incredible provision. We thank you that we can experience something of your love because you have poured it into our hearts by the Holy Spirit. For you love the world so much that you gave your one and only Son, Jesus, to be our Saviour. Jesus the Saviour, this gospel to tell joyfully came. And so we thank you, Father, that in your great wisdom, you sent Jesus to proclaim the good news of your kingdom. And so we thank you for the gospel. The good news that we can be saved from darkness and brought into your glorious light. We thank you that, that Jesus showed us how to live out the gospel. Loving our neighbour, praying for our enemies and sharing the good news with others. Jesus is seeking the wanderers yet. Why do they roam? And so we pray for those we know who have not yet responded to Jesus and are trying their best to live without him. Give to us wisdom, courage and, and sensitivity as we pray for them and witness to them. Come to my heart with our wonderful love. Come and abide, lifting my life till it rises above envy and falsehood and pride. Heavenly Father, your, your presence here this morning makes us conscious of our own shortcomings, but also conscious of your infinite love and grace that lifts us above those shortcomings. And so we take a few moments of quietness to confess our sins to God and to thank him for his forgiveness. We thank you, Father, for the powerful presence of the Holy Spirit living within us. Help us to yield our lives to him more and more each day as we grow in grace and seek to step out into his mission. And so we pray all these prayers in Jesus' name as we join together in the prayer that he has taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who have trespassed against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We're going to sing another song, It Is Well With My Soul.
here this morning are able to, and coming out on such an awful day as today, are able to say that it is well uh, with your soul. And so we move into our prayers for others. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for the, the gift of prayer. And as we pray now for others, we want to start by especially remembering those who are being affected by COVID-19. We pray for, for those who are bereaved. As we watch on a daily basis the, uh, the death count uh, mount, over 50,000 lives lost since this pandemic has happened in the UK. Over a million worldwide. Lord, we ask that you, who knows no geographical bounds, will continue to hold those who have lost loved ones in your arms and grant to them this day your peace and comfort. We pray for those who remain isolated in these days of continuing restriction. And we ask you, Lord Jesus, to come by your spirit and to provide emotional, spirit, spiritual and practical support for them. We think of those in our medical settings, patients who are not allowed visitors, and we're asking you, Lord, in these continuing difficult days to open up new ways to enable loved ones to keep in contact with those who are ill. We think of those who have lost their jobs in this season. We ask, Lord, that in the coming weeks and months that you would provide new employment and training opportunities. We remember those who are suffering with mental health issues, asking you, Lord, to provide healing and support. For all those awaiting medical treatment and screening, Lord, we ask that you would provide access to essential services. But Father of all, we lift these people up to you and Trust them to you. Give us the grace to accept your answers to our prayers and for your timing for those answers. And we pray for ourselves. On this whole mission Sunday, as we consider what it means to, to live on mission with Jesus in the reality of our everyday, we pray for honesty as we seek to address our fears and even our reluctance to engage in mission. That we would be open as God calls us to himself first and foremost. We pray for assurance that God will continue to love us regardless of our performance. We ask for solitude. As we seek to create space on a, on a daily basis, those times when we need to be with God and to listen for your voice. Fill us with God's compassion for our family, our neighbours and our friends. That you would give us confidence as we prepare to do God's work leaving the results always unto him. We pray for a sense of companionship, knowing that Jesus walks with us on mission. That we would be given opportunities in the coming days and weeks, in this very difficult season, to, to share our faith in natural, unforced ways. We pray for our trusted friends, those with whom we meet in fellowship band, whom we meet in small groups, others that we, who are our go-to people to share our faith with them. And our prayer is this morning that we might encourage one another along the way 
that we would be filled with a fresh joy as we see God accomplish his work through us. And so, Father, this morning we place ourselves into your hands. Take all that we offer and use it for your glory. For we ask these prayers in the name of Jesus. Amen. Two short readings this morning. One that I'm going to read from, uh, from the Romans chapter 7, 19 to 25. And then the second reading will be a, a video reading I'll explain in a moment. For the creation waits in eager expectation for the children of God to be revealed. For the creation was subjected to frustration, not by its own choice, but by the will of the one who subjected it. In hope that the creation itself will be liberated from its bondage to decay. And brought into the freedom and glory of the children of God. We know that the whole creation has been groaning as in the pains of childbirth right up to the present time. Not only so, but we ourselves who have the first fruits of the Spirit groan inwardly as we wait eagerly for our adoption to sonship and the redemption of our bodies. For in this hope we are saved. But hope that is seen is no hope at all. Who hopes for what they already have, but we hope for what we do not have. We wait for it patiently. In the same way, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. We do not know what we ought to pray for, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us through wordless groans. And he who searches our heart knows the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for God's people in accordance with the will of God. And we know that in all things God works for the good of, of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. For those God foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son, so that he might be the firstborn among many, many brothers and sisters. And those he predestined, he also called. And those he called, he also justified. Those he justified, he also glorified. Our second reading is Matthew 11 and verses 28 uh, to 30 and it is the message uh, version and that is going to be read in this, through this video form. Are you tired? Worn out? Burnt out on religion? Come to me. Get away with me and you'll recover your life. Take my yoke up on you. And I'll take yours. I'll show you how to take a real rest. Walk with me and work with me. Watch what I do. Learn the unforced rhythms of grace. 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 I won't lay anything heavy or ill-fitting on you. Keep company with me, and you'll learn to live freely and lightly. We thank God that his word still speaks to us today. We're going to sing again, uh, and the song this time is, He Will Hold Me Fast. i 